and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I had a friend suggest I make a video about cold weather instrument approach chart corrections. She's an airline pilot and flies a lot in part of the United States where there are colder temperatures and higher elevations. So we're going to talk about that. Now, why do we care about this? Because our altimeter, as those of you who fly can understand, there is a setting we can change in the altimeter to adjust for non-standard pressure. That would be our barometric pressure correction. But there is no way to correct for a non-standard temperature in an altimeter. Normally, this is not a big problem. There are some errors. However, when it's very, very cold and at higher elevations, the altimeter is more inaccurate. And the altimeter is going to tell you that you are flying higher than you actually are above the ground, which that kind of makes sense. It can cause a problem because you don't want to be too close to the ground, especially when you are flying in areas of higher terrain or lower to the ground when you can't see the ground on an instrument approach. So I can't correct the altimeter for non-standard temperature. And when it's very cold, we need to apply what's called the cold weather correction. So let's look at how we would even know if that was a thing. So here's an example we're gonna be using today in Massachusetts. We have Westfield, Springfield, Massachusetts. And you can see here is a Jeppesen chart and I'll just circle it right here in the notes. We have cold temperature altitude correction required at or below 21 degrees Celsius, or sorry, negative 21 degrees Celsius. Now, if you want to learn more about how to read Jepson charts versus FAA or what we sometimes call NACO charts, I have some other videos about that, so check those out. But if you see this note on a Jeppesen chart, that means you need to apply the cold weather corrections when they apply. In this case, it's below negative 21 C. Here is an example of the government issued charts. This doesn't have a note. It just has a little snowflake symbol. And then it says a negative 21 degree C. Same airport, so same information. So in this type of chart, you would look for the little snowflake symbol. And that is going to point you to looking in AIM. We'll get there eventually. But when you look for this symbol or the note, you also need to verify what part of the approach is the correction even made to. Because depending on where the approach is, the approach correction could be made to all of the approach segments or maybe only just one of the approach segments or maybe two of the approach segments. So... The FAA publishes a list. They keep it up to date. You can see this one's the current list. I don't have the whole thing, but I'll link to it in the video description. And we have a list of about 230 airports around the United States. There is about 70 in Alaska. A, a lot of them are in the lower 48 United States. And you can see on here, there's a list of different ones. I just started with Alaska. <clears throat> the affected segment here, it is listed so for example if you're going into Bettles Alaska you would apply the correction if it was negative 44 C and on the final approach segment but I want to point out if you look at the actual just chart neither of these charts says what segment you're supposed to apply that correction to so before you go to an airport and it's going to be possibly cold it would be wise to check this and see what segment you have to actually apply the correction to before we get too much farther in this, I want to quickly mention also the different segments of the approach. So our initial approach segment, it starts at the initial approach fix <clears throat> and it ends at the intermediate fix or the final approach fix. The intermediate segment begins at the intermediate fix and ends at the final approach fix. Now, not all approaches even have an intermediate fix, but those that do, it would be that portion of the approach. The final approach segment, by definition, starts at my final approach fix. <clears throat> it's shown as a Maltese cross on a non-precision approach. And it is a glide slope interception for, for flying a precision approach. And once again, I've got some other videos. Um, I'll link to these in the description. Check them out. You can look at me explaining Jeppesen versus FAA chart symbols. 
And then the missed approach segment starts at my missed approach point, if it's a non-precision approach, or arrival at the decision altitude, decision height on a precision approach. Okay, so that should be familiar to you already if you're an instrument rated pilot or if you're in your instrument training. So now let's take a look at AIM. So this is from AIM, and you can look this up in AIM. This is an ICAO chart that AIM has duplicated. This is our cold weather temperature correction chart. Okay, so let's do an example of the airport we looked at earlier. We have Westfield Barnes Regional Airport in Massachusetts. Again, it says negative 21C is our triggering point. And then we can see that it says it's a final approach is where we would have to apply that correction. There's some other airports on this list here. You can see some of them only apply to the intermediate segment of the approach. Some don't apply to final approach. Okay, but anyway, this one is going to, we're going to pretend it's negative 30 degrees Celsius for my example. And like I just mentioned, we're going to apply the corrections to the final approach segment only. So we only apply the corrections to altitudes that occur during that final segment. And I'm going to do this as an example of the ILS going into runway 20. Okay, there's other approaches that this airport has. Feel free to play with them on your own. But for this example, we're just going to look at the ILS and we're only applying my correction to the final approach segment. Now, I've zoomed in on the ICAO cold temperature chart. The top line of this chart, it's kind of kind of silly. It's not actually labeled. That is height above airport. You can find height above airport by subtracting your airport elevation from whatever altitude we are looking at for the correction. Okay, so this airport, we're going to pretend again it's negative 30 degrees. I need to find what is my airport elevation. Okay, and so where we can find that in the corner of the Jeppesen chart in the Jeppesen briefing strip the elevation is 270 feet. So we find that information. Okay, next thing, we want to apply this correction. We're looking at the decision height. We're looking only at the final approach segment. So on a precision approach, ILS is a precision approach. We have glide slope vertical guidance. We're only going to apply the correction to my decision altitude, and we need to know what is the height above the airport for that. So we can find the decision height by actually just looking at the bottom part of the chart, looking at right below my profile view. Erase a little ink there. Okay. So it says here on my ILS um, below, we see that in parentheses, we have the decision height and it is 250 feet above the airport. Okay. So that is my height above the airport. Now, what I'm going to be doing is finding, look in the chart right here. Okay, I would look at 250 and I look down to negative 30. Okay, and I'm going to find the intersection. Now, on this chart, if you read all the notes in AIM, you don't do interpolating. So let's just round up. That is the safer thing to do anyway. And if we do that rounding up, which I hate interpolating, but whatever, we get the number 60. So that is a 60 foot correction. And so we take that 60 foot correction and we are going to apply it to my decision altitude. 520 feet MSL for my decision altitude plus 60 feet gives me a new decision altitude of 580 feet MSL. If I was flying this approach and it was negative 30 degrees Celsius. And once again, like I said, we don't take corrections to other parts of this approach because it, it says to only apply them to the final approach segment here. All right, a few other notes that you can find these all detailed out in AIM, but it's good to point them out. Okay, if you have, let's say you're doing the intermediate segment and you have some step downs, you find the correction for the lowest published altitude on that part of the approach. And that correction that comes from the table, you will add to all the step downs on that segment of the approach. Okay, so that's important. Now the G1000 that I fly in a lot of the airplanes where I work, we have a temperature compensation in the G1000. You can use that, provided you know how to use it in your avionics, 
verify it against IKO chart. I'm not just going to rely on that because what am I really bound by using the IKO chart and using it correctly. So if your airplane has ability to do the compensation, it's fine, but make sure you're verifying that it's right. You also have to tell ATC. So an example of phraseology that they give you in AIM is you might say, request 7,700 feet for cold temperature operations. You do not have to do this on the final approach segment if that's the corrections that are being made, but let's say it's for your intermediate segment or some part of the missed approach, you would tell ATC because otherwise they might wonder why are you not flying at the altitude printed on the chart? Well, you're gonna tell them in this way. When you're doing the compensating, you wanna use the temperature given by the METAR. You don't try to look at your temperature aloft while flying the approach and do the correction that way. Don't do that. Just use the surface temperature from the METAR. That makes it easy. Also, AIM tells us that pilots can round up to the nearest hole 100. Or sorry, we can round to the nearest hole 100 or you can choose to just round up. The safest thing to do is round up, but it is a little bit left to pilot discretion. For the MDA or a decision altitude correction, you don't round down. Okay, so we should not be rounding down. We're low to the ground. We want to be rounding in the safer direction, which is rounding up. And finally, you want to always check that FAA list because, again, it, I want to emphasize the approach charts do not say what segment you make the corrections to. So just because it has the little snowflake or the note, if it's Jeppesen, you don't just go through and apply all the corrections, all the parts of the chart, all the parts of the approach. You have to verify what segment does it apply to. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing to Aviation 101 with Laura and have a fantastic day.